fourth down. Matt Ryan under a bit of duress from that Steeler pressure. Looking for Paris Campbell. You had Cam Sutton and Minka Fitzpatrick in the neighborhood. No flag. Tip of the cap there from Coach Tomlin. And Pittsburgh goes on the road and gets the victory. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman join us as they do every Monday. And fellas, there's a lot here in this last couple of minutes to go through. Clock, timeout, down and distance. There's always a lot to manage. And Jeff Saturday, sure, he's the new coach. So you could say, wow, I'm not sure how they handled that. But I wonder, fellas, Matt Ryan's been through this a million times after that scramble on third down. He knows how many timeouts he's got. He could, you know, he could give the the, the T and give me, take a quick break. I just wonder, Joe, just to start with you, how you how you kind of go through all of that and then the non-flag on the last play. There's a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot there, as, as there is in these tight games. And then you, you hurry up and you get off the air. You're like, what the heck just happened? But I, I'm with you. I mean, Matt Ryan knows, you know, where he is in space. He knows that he just reeled off that run. And they've got a third down play coming up. They've got three timeouts in their pocket. Time maybe to use one and get settled down. Instead, they're hurrying like they don't have any timeouts. It just didn't feel right. And, yeah, everybody's going to say, well, Saturday is the inexperienced head coach. There are people up in the booth that are that are helping on on plays like that. There's Matt Ryan, as you said. And then I, I thought, you know, there was some contact at the top of that route um, with Sutton having his back back toward the quarterback and in some ways impeding Paris Campbell getting back to the ball. So, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. In the end, it's a big road win for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Kenny Pickett. And I thought the kid played great here tonight in Indianapolis. Yeah, I'm going to get to pick it in a moment, Troy. I'm just really interested. As a quarterback, you guys practice two minutes so much. What did you prefer to do? I mean, having three timeouts in your pocket does you no damn good at the end if you've got them. If, there's, if the game's over and you got timeouts, what good were they? I, how, how would you prefer to handle those situations in terms of protecting timeouts versus protecting time? Well, I do think uh, in, in this game, and I, and I said it during the ballgame, I thought they would use a timeout. There were right. some, some critical moments there, critical downs, where, you know, do you want to try to rush it or do you want to call timeout because you've got them and then set things up? The, the fact that Matt Ryan didn't call timeout or Saturday with, as Joe said, people that he's got upstairs that he's in communication with leads me to believe that they felt like they had Pittsburgh maybe on their heels, whether you agree with that or not. I think there, there was – an explanation. I think there will be an explanation on their part. As far as in general, I will say that what I see a lot of times is teams are too quick to use timeouts. Okay. And I don't think clock management is good overall in a lot of situations, but a lot of times coaches panic because they don't want to be accused of having timeouts <laughs> in their pocket. This was not one of those situations. But a lot of times when you're watching these games, a lot of these timeouts get used awfully quick. But I thought they were going to burn a couple tonight in order to set things up a little bit better than what they were able to. Troy, what pick it show you? Second and well, you know, coming into this game, Scott, uh, you know, and I said it on our open as we came into the game, that it was still kind of a mixed bag from what I had seen. There were times when you say, wow, he looks really good. There's times when you say, you know, he's a young quarterback and he's got a lot of room for growth. That's what you would expect. I think we're all quick to try to declare whether these guys are going to be great players, franchise quarterbacks or not. I know what my rookie year was like, and it's hard. And he has gone kind of through those bumps and bruises along the way. The things that I saw where I thought he needed to get better at, I'll be honest, he, he did those things tonight. He had a tendency to hold the ball. He took sacks coming into this game that weren't on the offensive line. But tonight I thought he was decisive, threw the ball accurately, made some really good decisions, did a lot of really good things. I, I, I liked him coming out. And uh, I pull for all quarterbacks, but especially these young guys. I was, I was happy to see them have the night he had. We, we goof about the memory lane stuff, Troy. But, I mean, look, you, you, you're an old number eight back in the day, and you talk about being a rookie and how it was hard. What specifically, like you, you mentioned in the broadcast, it wasn't the speed for him as much as the, 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 the multiple defenses that he's facing. But if you could explain in a way that we might digest, what is it that's so different from Sunday football, from Saturday football, that you just have to learn and figure out? Well, for me, it was the speed, and I think for most quarterbacks it is. And I know the transition from high school to college is about a step faster. And then when you go from college to pro, everything just happens at warp speed. And when you're young and you're not seeing defenses very well as it is because of all the disguises, and then everybody's moving so fast, it's just a big blur. So what happens is for a lot of young quarterbacks, you see them scramble more than they do later in their careers. And a lot of people will say, man, I remember when he used to run a lot and he was really good at doing that, and now he doesn't hardly run at all. 
Well, that's because he's seeing defenses you know, a lot better, yeah. and he knows how to knows how to pick defenses apart. But that's the big thing. But with college influencing the NFL game the way that it is, I was a little surprised by his answer because I do. Even though the the college or the pro defensive coordinators are are sophisticated, I do think that these guys are more prepared to come into the NFL and play well earlier than than what the quarterbacks were of my generation. Might not have looked like the best game on paper, but it turns into one of the more entertaining games of the week. Funny how that works out, right, Joe? Next week, the schedule, uh, the, the record might not say that the Bucs are awesome, but you got a division leader, and uh, we'll look forward to the visit uh, following the Saints and the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, it's Tom Brady. It's, uh, it's Tom Brady and the Bucs against the New Orleans Saints. It'll be fun, and uh, we'll be there in Tampa ready to go. Yes, and, and can somebody get this guy a hot dog? I mean, after last week, I feel like we're not keeping him fed the way he needs to eat, Scott. Yeah, no, because I complain about the halftime food. <laughs> he, he had it. Somebody went out to, to some delicacy restaurant and brought him a, a roasted chicken. You noticed that, huh? I did notice yeah, that. Right. I, I, had, uh, they, I had a turkey sandwich. Do, and you're, do they feed you? Like, do they, get, do they spoon feed you guys? Are they, like, fanning you and feeding oh, you guys chilled yeah. grapes? Is that, is, that, is that in the contract? They roll out a white tablecloth table right about here, Scott. Yeah. We sit yeah. across from each other. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's, part it's, of the, awesome. it's part of the deal. Part of the deal yeah. coming over. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was uh, mandatory. Whatever it takes, guys, to have, to have you on board and to have these conversations, I'll sign off on that. As always, your time is appreciated. Troy, Joe, appreciate you guys. Thank you, Scott. See you. Someone's going to fan them and feed them grapes, and they're going to be escorted to the tarmac, and off they go. All right, we're just getting started. Plenty more to come from Indy. Ryan Clark standing by to break down some tape on Kenny Pickett, and uh, a lot to be thankful for this time of the year. Unless... Uh, where they were going to start him from going down, right? Like if he was going to get the first down and then we got there, um, I expect this to get on the ball and be and have another play um, a little bit quicker than that. But again, it wasn't a, this wasn't a press for time. We just didn't make enough plays. Ryan Clark is with us every Monday. And it, look, let's just be, it's wild. If, if you were coaching the Steelers tonight, I'd be like, I'm happy for my guys. Just wild. If Booger were coaching the Buccaneers next Listen, week, I'd be like, I'm thrilled for Booger. You'd be happy for your guy. If I was coaching the Steelers next week, I'd be happy for this guy too. Except yeah. for that would mean that Coach Tomlin ain't coaching him, so I don't want the stinking job. No, I understand. But you, you get what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> yeah. just, it, it's just a strange thing that our former colleague is now in this situation. And yes. when the end of this game plays out as it does, it opens up the conversation of how did the Colts manage that end game? How, how did you process it? Um, I don't think they managed it well. It seemed that Jeff understood what he wanted to do and how he wanted to utilize those timeouts late. But also, if you're Matt Ryan and you run the football, first of all, if you have an opportunity to get the first down as a veteran quarterback, you need to make sure that you get it. Right. You don't dive before the first down and then understand the time and also how many timeouts you have available. I think what's most important in that situation is understanding about getting to the right play uh -huh. and giving yourself an opportunity to win. Listen, we're not trying to keep Kenny Pickett from getting the football. And right. for the last play to end in a Matt Ryan, Ryan roll left, heave down the field, that is incompetence in the way that you run your two-minute offense. And that goes on the head coach, the offensive co uh, play caller, and the quarterback. That's what, I'd say and the quarterback for sure. I was baffled yeah. after a relative – that's a long run for any quarterback, and yeah. particularly a, a veteran quarterback. I would have thought that he would have called for the time out there. Ryan has – we've been hosting a show. Apparently he's just spoken about it. And uh, here's his comment on the end game. Yeah, um, had the run, I guess, on second down. Um, 